Well, the funny thing is the Chinese government wants these companies to buy Chinese made chips, but there aren't enough of them, uh, in part because the U.S. has controlled the equipment that's needed to make advanced semiconductors. So China is struggling. And when you're telling these companies uh, to buy Chinese made chips, there's just going to be uh, not enough for them to be able to get. And that's going to delay China's AI developments. Jensen has said this morning that he told President Trump that AI will advance with or without the United States. As far as things stand currently with the export controls, we don't have very much clarity because there's been a lot of back and forth. But how do you see where do things lay at the moment? Well, I think there's a lot of disappointment with the export controls in uh, in Washington. There was a hope that blocking China from buying the most advanced chips for training AI models would keep them you know, at least a year behind U.S. models. And what we saw with DeepSeek around the, the beginning of this year was that they're actually only something like three months behind. And since then, it's not just DeepSeek. It's also uh, Kimi from Moonshot. It's also Jupu. It's, uh, it's Alibaba. There is a wide, deep bench of Chinese AI companies that are all really successful. And it doesn't necessarily seem to be the case that they're uh, they're loaded up with smuggled chips that they're not supposed to be able to buy. So I think there's a real turning point here where they're deciding, do we want to actually tighten the screws and stop everything because now is the critical moment to hold back China in AI? Or do we want to recognize that maybe these controls aren't going to achieve everything that we hope for and we just have to run faster and recognize the gap isn't going to be very large compared to what the U.S. would like?